December 10th, 1967, 3.25 p.m. On this cold, rain-soaked day, an eight-seat twin-engine Lockheed aircraft making its final approach to Truax Field in Madison, Wisconsin, dropped out of the sky and into the waters of Lake Monona. Dead was 26-year-old Otis Redding. Four members of his backup band, the Bar Kays, all teenagers, and the airplane's pilot, Richard Frazier. Somehow, there was a survivor. Ben Colley, the Bar Kays trumpet player, was found in the water, clutching a seat cushion. The airplane had iced up during its approach, and its struggle to maintain altitude was brief. In the early evening, lines were forming at a Madison rock venue called The Factory. Otis Redding and the Bar Kays were scheduled for two shows. The opening act was a locally managed rock band called The Grim Reapers. Welcome to Wisconsinology on Music, a collaboration with 91.1 The Avenue and Wisconsinology.com. In early 1967, Otis Redding was a consistent hitmaker and a dynamic performer, well known to black audiences and the R&B charts. He was now breaking into the larger and more lucrative white audience market. Thanks to a breakout performance at the Monterey Pop Festival, he found that audience. They were young people, hippies. Otis referred to them as the love crowd. 1967 was a pivotal year for youth culture and music, and Otis Redding wanted in. By late August, Otis Redding's career was exploding. He wrote Respect, a million-selling hit for Aretha Franklin, and he co-wrote and produced Sweet Soul Music for his new discovery, Arthur Conley. This was another million seller that went all the way up to number two on the pop charts. Right now, all he needed was a number one song for himself. While staying at a houseboat in Sausalito on the San Francisco Bay, Otis began writing a song that would evolve with help from frequent co-writer Steve Cropper into the number one mainstream pop song that he always wanted. That song was called Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. In November, Otis Redding recorded the basic tracks of the song at Stack Studios in Memphis. Accompanying him was Steve Cropper and his band Booker T and the MGs. At an overdub session on December 7th, Otis ad-libbed a whistling melody as a temporary placeholder during the song's final fade-out. He intended to add final touches to the song at a session the following week. His last words to Steve Cropper were, See you on Monday. Otis and his band embarked on a weekend tour of Cleveland and then Madison. That Monday that Otis talked about never came. In the spring of 1968, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay hit number one. It would go on to sell four million copies and currently sits close to 500 million listens on Spotify. And Steve Cropper, who was tasked with finishing the song for release, left in the now iconic whistling section. Otis Redding is part of a triumvirate of hard touring rock stars whose fates tragically intertwine in Wisconsin. In 1959, Buddy Holly's tour from hell through a brutal Wisconsin winter forced his hand in taking a fatal charter flight a short 12 hours after he left the state. In 1990, Stevie Ray Vaughan took a chopper flight straight into a glacial remnant ski hill after a performance at Alpine Valley near Eagle, Wisconsin. All three are enshrined in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's interesting to note that the Grim Reapers, the opening act for Otis Redding's Madison show that never was, would also have future Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. Tom Peterson and Rick Nielsen the founding members of Cheap Trick. For 91.1 The Avenue and Wisconsinology.com, my name 
is Frank Anderson. Wisconsinology on Music is presented by a grant from the Bright Idea Fund from the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region, a supporting partner of The Avenue.